good. Get a better call to make sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Let me. Uh, So, uh, okay, let me just sort of tell you what I'm doing. Um, I've been doing hypnosis for like 20 years. So, I've gotten really good at helping people stop smoking. I usually have a process, it's uh, about three sessions. And first session, I can almost promise you won't have a, a craving at the end. If you come in with a craving. I hope so. I have not been for a couple hours. I okay. So, oh, I can sneak in have a couple drives. No, I don't. And we have to reschedule. Oh, I better not. So, uh, what I'm doing is, I mean, the, the, the interesting and strange thing about this whole thing is I pretty much can help change people very quickly. And that seems really unusual for most people. Uh, but I'm, I'm also testing out just exactly how quickly we can do it. Right. Um, so, uh, those big group ones, you know, like a damn Boise, and then yeah, it's like 60 people, 100 people. Yeah. That's that's a lot more difficult, you know, you're dealing with so many people and there's too many variables. You can get some good results with some people, but not with everybody. So, um, what, what I'm going to be doing with you is uh, I want to just go through a real sort of brief process here. See what your response is. I want you to come back in a couple days, maybe next week, whatever we can arrange. And I will have you go through the, the whole first session that I normally give people. So regardless of how successful you are here, we're, we're going to have a we're going to have a, an entire session next time just because you volunteered to do this. Okay. Um, as people always come in, I ask them have a to have a craving for a cigarette. When you're jonesing for a cigarette, what's the feeling like? Just keep thinking about me more. Just, okay. So it's just a constant thought. Yeah. Sarah. All the way. Oh, we're so just like, well, I had that one for about an hour before I left, and then all the way here, I'm like, well, I can just take a couple drags. And <laughs> it's like, no, no, I can't. Is there a physical feeling that you have when you're craving a cigarette? I start getting a little uh, antsy. Okay. Yeah. I can't even think of the word. But okay. Uh, well, anxious or yeah. agitated? Yeah. And emotionally? Are you, are you getting, do you get angry or frustrated? Or frustrated. Frustrated. Mm -hmm. If I go too long, I start getting pretty pissy. Okay. Um, and um, what, what I was asked this, and you've never done hypnosis before. Okay, so, okay. Whatever you call it. Just assuming I can do everything I can, do, I say I can do. My wife says I did it the fair ones, but I don't remember. I don't know whether they kept that, like oh, really? chicken or whatever. Oh. She said I was doing all kinds of weird things. I don't remember. Wow, okay. Remember. Well, let, let me ask you then. What? If you if you were really hypnotized, what do you think it would feel like? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Because you see these people doing interesting things. What do you think's going on? What's their experience like? Probably like they're asleep. I guess. When I'm working with somebody, uh, I have an objective. All I'm doing is directing what they pay attention to, and my goal is to really narrow down their focus to a point that is just really intense and ideally just really enjoyable. So their whole conscious mind is focused on that. Now, people come to me for all the same reason. They, they want to make a change, but their subconscious mind is doing something else. So you, know, you want to be a non-smoker, this part wants a cigarette really bad. Yeah. Okay? If I'm able to direct your attention, really focus down to some point that's really enjoyable. It distracts your conscious mind that can give an instruction here to the subconscious mind. And it can be very fast and very direct. Your responsibility during the whole process here is just to follow my instructions. So, uh, what are the things that you 
really hate most about smoking? Uh, I lost both my parents from cancer. Well, my mom had some breathing issues and passed away in her sleep, but my dad passed away from cancer. So. Okay. The cost, the smell. How much do you spend on? Uh, five to ten dollars a day. I remember that. I used to smoke too. Yeah, they just keep going up and up. Yeah. I remember when you get them for a dollar out of the vending machine. Right. When I was in high school, we'd go up to a little restaurant and had a vending machine in the back. Mm -hmm. Go in there and throw in a dollar twenty-five and quarters and get a pack of smokes. Yeah. If, uh, what, what else are things you don't like about it? You got the smell, the cost, what it's done to your, your parents. Well, I don't know what it's done to me. What, what do you notice health wise? I don't know. Well, I bad asthma. I was diagnosed with COPD when I was 32. 31, 32. Okay, how's it, what's your reading like? Uh, it depends on the day. <laughs> the smoke yeah. we've had in there lately has been pretty, pretty yeah. tough. And um, how much do you smoke a day? Do you work outdoors? Huh? Do you work outdoors? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. I'm on disability, but I do. I see. Okay. Here and there. Uh, jobs, whatever. I usually I smoke a lot when I drive. I used to, um, well, I still have a CDL, but. Okay. All right. Um, if you were to like bundle all those things up, about smoking and pack them inside, what do you think the response would be? How would you, what sort of feeling would be coming up? Uh, probably discuss anger. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things I like to do to sort of help start people off is. You're obviously here because you want to do the right thing. We all want to do the right thing. It would be often, it would be nice if we had in our head a voice that would speak to us exactly when we need it. And it's the kind of voice that when we heard it, we'd go like, oh yeah, okay. You know, we'd immediately follow it. So, you know, we know it cares about us. It has sort of a strength and authority that we follow and uh, we would immediately respond to it. So just take a moment to imagine what that voice would be like. It could be someone you know, it could be a voice you create, it could be a man or a woman, it could be really strong and commanding, or soft and passionate. But it's the kind of voice that if it said, stop, pay attention, you just immediately drop everything, focus right in, okay? So take a moment to engineer the kind of voice you would want to follow. And when you have that in your mind, what it would sound like, let me know. Okay, so what's the voice like? Uh, my mom, probably. Okay. And how would she say, how would she speak to you? To tell me what means to Okay. Would it be, would it, would it, would it be loud and, and commanding or just really caring and loving or nagging or how would she say it? Uh, kind of a mixture, I guess. Uh, uh -huh. Caring but kind of bitchy and nagging at the same time. Okay. So I want you to do something. Uh, for this moment, close your eyes and imagine that voice. Now, put yourself, imagine yourself driving back after our meeting here. And it would be at the moment when you would just normally reach for a cigarette. And now, hear that voice, your mom's voice. Speak to you, tell you exactly what you need to do, so that that whole moment, the craving, the thought, just sort of goes away, and you're fine. And when you've gone through that moment, and you feel good, just let me know. Okay, okay now, what did she say? Tell me to put it down, and okay. get my head on straight. Okay, good. Now go to the next moment after that when maybe a craving would come up and you can immediately hear her voice. Go through that entire moment until you're fine. 
Go on your way. Let me know when you've done that. Okay. Now another moment after that, we would have a thought of a cigarette. Now, just on your own, take, make five different events in your mind where this voice is just instantly there exactly when you need it. And when you've gone through each of these five events and you're fine at every one of them, there's no cigarettes, nothing, let me know. stuck there, the glue is sort of getting crusty, that might start proceeding down into the palm. And it's really, well you know you're safe, but it's really strange. When you notice the more you try to move the hand, the more stuck it becomes. So even as you're trying, 
Yeah, it's stuck right there. Pretty weird, isn't it? Yeah. Keep looking. Now stop trying, but I want you to notice as you look at that hand, you may notice how that hand seems entirely different from the hand that you remember having. A lot of people simply feel like it's different. It's not really like the hand they remember. Sometimes if you look, you might notice fingers look a little strange, it might change shape, you might see shadows start to move. And so as you notice anything like that, just let me know, tell me what you notice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, d does it look like it's changing at all? Sometimes people have different number of fingers, <laughs> or the number of fingers don't look right for whatever reason. You notice anything like that? No. Okay. Well, the interesting thing here is that hand is going to stay stuck until you're a non smoker. So this could take hours or so, but I'm also going to help you speed it up. I want you to focus on that hand, notice how weird it's looking, maybe any changes that are taking place as well. But as you're doing that, I want you to focus on that disgust and that anger that you have toward cigarettes. Real anger. I want you to focus on that anger, that real anger, that disgust that you have toward smoking. When you start to feel that sort of disgust and that anger, just let me know. Okay, notice. Now, as you focus on that, the only thing that's going to really help you to become a non-smoker is to say the words with a lot of strength. Say these words, I'm a non-smoker. I'm a non-smoker. Now make it feel really good. Say it again. I'm a non-smoker. I'm a non-smoker. Good. Does it feel good? Yeah. Say it again. I'm a non-smoker. Good. Even stronger. I'm a non-smoker. Are you a non-smoker? I'm a non-smoker. You are a non-smoker? Yes. It feels great, doesn't it? Yes. Lift your hand. <laughs> okay, have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, try and want that cigarette. Tell me what you notice. Okay. Keep trying. I'm gonna I'm gonna bug you for a minute or so. I'm gonna say keep trying. Want that cigarette? Tell me what you notice. Yeah, and the more you even think about it, the more disgust you feel toward it. So keep trying to want that cigarette. Yeah, that's how you're Just like, uh, I don't know, I just smoke. So if you want to have a cigarette for several hours and you smoke one, it tastes yeah. disgusting. Yeah, okay. So notice, you're, you're trying to want a cigarette and you can't. It's like that disgust comes right up there. But say these words and tell me what it feels like. Say, I'm a non-smoker. I'm a non-smoker. Good. Yeah. Say it again. I'm a non-smoker. Feels better. Say it again. I'm a non-smoker. Is it true? Yes. <laughs> What's that feel? What's that like? Relief. Yeah. When you say that and you feel this incredible relief. I've mean, taken patches and pills and lozenges and mm -hmm. just. Okay. Now. In your mind, let's just, let's just rehearse this. Imagine one of the more stressful events that you might have gone through where you resorted to a cigarette. So put yourself right in that moment. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt. And notice every time you say, I'm a non-smoker or think about a cigarette, you just can't, you can't want it. Even in that stressful moment. Yeah, feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. You're gonna do great at this. I hope. <laughs> now, now if we want to spend a couple minutes here, what sort of thoughts and feelings come to mind? Uh, surprise. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, I want to, uh, when can we see each other next? Um, if I, if, would Thursday be good for you? That'd be about two, uh, two, two more days. Uh, what time? It's been a long time. I gotta be in the Meridian at two. Oh, we can see, we can see it. Does that work for you? Yeah. Both well, new? Okay. Okay, so this is what's going to happen for 
I want you to get these two days of experience of what it's like. It seems weird. Uh, what's happening is you basically discovered another part of you and you're not just not used to it yet. So get used to it. You can do that a couple ways. Every time you think about spoken, just notice how disgusting, how angry you are toward it. And every time you say, I'm a non-smoker, notice how it feels good. And the reason I want you to say that a lot, I want you to feel good. That's a big one. <laughs> but every time you say those words, I'm a non-smoker, you actually give yourself something to live up to, a sense of pride. I am a non-smoker. Okay? Alright. So let's, uh, so Tuesday at noon? Yeah. Alright, great. Tuesday, Thursday? Thursday at noon, yeah. Got some bad right quick over to church because I got tired of everybody looking at me because you know, I sleep like a cigarette. Oh man. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to give you a couple cards. If you need, to, need any, have any questions, give me a call. Obviously, if you know anyone who could use my service, I really appreciate any referral. Uh, but I yeah, saw so that paper, you do quite a bit of different. Yeah, yeah I eat, you know, lots of smoking, some weight loss, a lot of anxiety, and you know, post traumatic stress. Wow. Out of <laughs> My daughter's so excited about that. She just, oh, wow, that's crazy. Oh. She started taking over and lighting. Okay, yeah, that would be what, how old is she? 15. I mean, even on uh, 4th of July, I had some. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, the little fat ones. I mean, the legal ones, even. They weren't even the legal ones. She freaked out and ran in the house, and it's just like, holy hell. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've, that's about, so that's about the youngest I work with. They started to some meds, but it's not. Yeah. She still freaks out. It's a type of ventilator. Okay. Well, uh, you want to tell people about me, give me my car, that's yeah. fine. I've got yeah. you set up for next Thursday and at noon. And uh, pretty, pretty, uh, you did great. I can give you credit here. All right? All right. How do you feel? I'm good. You non smoker? I'm a non smoker. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.